Hi guys, I'm Kasha. Welcome to my channel, to my bookland and to our coffee times together. And today I bring you my June reading wrap up. It's coffee time. So my June was not that bad. I actually ended up reading 11 titles. Now there is a couple of graphic novels in there but 11 is a kind of like a regular number for me because I'm trying now to read some graphic novels so they help to get the number a little bit you know higher than I would regularly just with normal sized novels. So in this video we're gonna be checking out everything that I read starting by the lowest rating and ended up as always with a good note with my favorite books of the month of June. So one of the cool things is that I finally got my ass to register at NetGalley. So I have also acquired some free books thanks to NetGalley that I have. I have read already a couple and I have reviewed them. So I'm gonna be trying to do this more often, like review more of their books every month. Um, some of them are uh, releases that um, were released in 2019. Some of them are even uh, coming up releases for this year so it is really cool that I'm also gonna be able to get some books before they they are published um, so the first one sadly in this list because it only got two coffee mugs is one of those books that I was super excited about and Ned Gully gave it to me and it just it was it was not what I expected and that is Five Midnight by Anne Davila Cardinal. I was super excited about this book because this is a YA horror story about El Cuco, who is like a monster that people have created in order to scare children. And this is a you know story that comes from Puerto Rico, but there are many Latin speaking uh, communities, including uh, the Spanish. Uh, community in Spain that used this kind of monster because when I was a kid um, for me instead of El Cuco was El Coco which is basically the same thing and they would be like oh if you don't behave the El Cuco is gonna come and take you or things like that they would use that you know uh, to threaten children which it sounds a little bit harsh <laughs> But it's kind of part of the Spanish uh, speaking community, I guess. Um, so I was really excited about it because it was had to do with a myth from my childhood. It, it was horror and I was really hoping for some good diversity when it comes to represent the uh, Puerto Rican culture. And it just it just didn't deliver it for me. We're following basically the story of five teenagers that encounter El Cuco and they're trying to figure it out. Why is he acting? Why is he killing people? Why is he targeting these specific people? My con biggest concern with this was that um, the story was a little bit all over the place. The characters didn't get a proper development, so all the characters felt a little bit like the same in a way. And there was a love story that was 100% unnecessary. Um, so that's why I didn't really like the book and I gave it only two coffee mugs. But I did like that they tried to show as much as possible from the Puerto Rican culture, so I did appreciate that. But unfortunately, the main story uh, that was supposed to be creepy, which it wasn't, and it was not creepy, it was not scary. Um, I don't know, the, the, the whole thing, I think the whole story was a little bit underdeveloped for my taste. So, yeah, it sucks because I really was expecting this book and it just, it was disappointing for me. Then with three coffee mugs, I have Stage Dreams by Melanie Gilman. And this is a graphic novel that is actually coming out in the third of on the 3rd of um, September this year. But I got an early copy through NetGalley and I was really excited to read it also this month because this is a queer story based on the Western. Like it's like a Western story with queer characters in the 1800s and I thought that was so cool and interesting. Uh, we're following the story of a trans and a lesbian and it just, it was so cute 
and adorable it was very short and i wish that we would have had a little bit more of the story and of the characters but i'm really excited to get volume two whenever that comes out which probably i'm gonna have to wait a little bit but definitely a graphic novel that i would like to continue um and it's just full of you know adventures and robbery like it has this flair of the um, western movies so if you're interested in a little bit kind of a different queer story this might be for you then we have probably the best kiss in the world by Pernille Huge and I gave this one 3.5 coffee mugs and I got a copy of these also thanks to NetGalley and I was excited to read a, a kind of like a different romance story um, and we're following Jen and her passion is actually brewing beer so it's something you don't see in every book so I thought that was very interesting and sadly due to a car accident she lost her parents and she has been taking care of her sister ever since that lost a leg in that accident so all her life she's felt very responsible for her sister she has not really tried to achieve her dreams she has just kind of settled and accepted her life as it is and has this boring boyfriend that she doesn't really love but you know she's used to him uh, her parents used to like him so she kind of has accepted her this as her destiny and the story is really beautiful because she at some point starts to let go of all of these OCD and realizes the other things are important in life um, of course there is another love interest that comes in the picture but you also get to see her relationship with her sister and that mechanics between them and I really enjoy it and so you're looking for a Roman story that is a little bit different I will recommend you to check this one out then we have History is All You Left Me by Adam Silvera that I also gave 3.5 coffee mugs and I really did enjoy it. I think what made me give it less points is um, the second part of the book and how some relationships there developed. I was maybe not 100% backing that up all the way. Um, but um, I love that this one, the same as they both die at the end, they're dividing the chapters uh, between um, in this case, uh, 2014, when Griffin and Theo were together, and 2016, which is after Theo passed away. Basically, in our story, and you already know this from the beginning, uh, we're following Griffin. Uh, he's a teenager, he's gay, and his uh, first boyfriend, his first love, um, died in an accident. And so this book is basically him telling us their story together, which is the 2014 part of the book and then in we are getting basically chapters mixed between the time when they were together and the time after the accident and Theo's death and how he's coping with it how his family tries to help him cope with it and I did love all the exploration and different reactions from family members and friends but there were some relationships and things that happened in the second half that maybe were not something that I was so happy about and I think that's why I only gave it 3.5 but if you like Adam Silvera, if you liked They Both Die at the End, I'm sure you also enjoyed this one and another one that I read for the Buzzword Readathon is Everything That Makes You by Mariah McStay. And I also gave this one 3.5 coffee mugs. Um, there were some things about the book that felt a little bit unpolished. And I wish they would have developed this story in a more kind of clear way that would have made it even more enjoyable. But I really did enjoy the idea of the book. Basically, it is a book that is being told by two perspectives. We have two different characters, but those characters are both the same girl. Basically, we're getting one chapter from Fiona, one chapter from a girl called Fee, and one chapter from Fiona, one chapter from Fee, and they are both the same character. They're both Fiona, but we are exploring her life in two different kind of outcomes of her life so we are following her as Fiona when she was a kid she had an accident and she got hot oil spilled in half of her face so she has to deal with a lot of scars on half of her face and that makes her feel very insecure towards you know um, school and and other people and going to sing on stage or things like that 
And then we're following the story of Fee, which it would have been her story if she would have never had this accident and if she would have never gotten those scars on her face, how her life might have been different. So I love that we are exploring the same character if her life would have had two different experiences. Sometimes one little accident, one little thing that happens to you can change everything in your life, can turn you into a totally different person. Um, or sometimes maybe something happens to you, but your life is still the same, even though something really heavy happened to you. So I love that it's exploring that. And I wish that more books would be done like this, because I think it's super interesting to explore the life of somebody in uh, different kind of uh, storylines to see what would have happened if she would have had this accident, if she would have made this choice. I think it was super interesting. We moved to four coffee mugs and we have yet another book I read for the Password Readathon and that is You're Never Weird on the Internet, Almost by Felicia Day. And I can believe I had not read this book before because it is totally something for me. Um, it is basically her memoir. So I feel kind of weird giving it a rating, but I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and it is her story from the very beginning when she was, uh, you know, a kid being homeschooled, when she went to university. I also love that we get to explore her nerd side and her gamer side when girls were still not really accepted into that culture that much when it was rare <laughs> to be a gamer girl and i love that she's also telling a lot of uh, rejections and uh, bad stories bad things that happened to her but she's always leaving everything in a positive note it's really empowering and it is absolutely amazing and i think it would be also very empowering for a lot of girls that are nerds and gamers and that have heard you know specific things that men sometimes say when you are such a big nerd or a gamer as a girl especially in the past you know uh, i felt like they were not taking me seriously and i feel like she had the same kind of feeling and so it was really relatable to me also because of my age i guess but if you're a, gir a, a gamer girl a nerd I think you'll definitely like to listen to her story. Also with four coffee mugs, we have Made For You by Melissa Marr. And I went into this one also for the Buzzword Readathon thinking that it was going to be a teenage supernatural kind of story and it ended up being a thriller and more disturbed than I expected, which was a big plus for me. We're basically following the story of Eva and she is living what it seems like a normal life. She has her boyfriend, everything's good. But then on the way home from a party, she gets run over by a car. She wakes up in the hospital with a lot of scars and injuries and she doesn't remember what exactly happened to her. And she's having a big you know a big problem to accept herself with the scars on her face and with all of these injuries and she doesn't want anybody to see her but what really changed her life that night was not just that but the fact that now when some people touch her with bare skin she's able to see how they're gonna die and i thought that was really interesting especially because what she's seeing is uh images of a serial killer that starts to kill people around her and we don't know who this person is and it keeps attention in the mystery until the very end and i really loved it and like i said it was way more disturbing than i thought at some point i was like is this really ya but it is i checked <laughs> um because i thought it was a bit disturbing um but that was a big plus for me the cover is gorgeous so this was a book that surprised me in a positive way. Also with four coffee mugs, we have Draw the Line by Lauren Lean. And I read this one also in June because it is Pride Month. So we are following uh, queer characters. And, um, you know, it is about accepting who you are and fighting all the hate. Disclaimer alert for bullying here and homophobia because there is some in this book. So just, you know, make sure that you know that before you go into the book. I just wanted to make the disclaimer for that but I really like the story because it is this guy that lives in Texas so for him you know it's really hard to come out because he knows he's not gonna be accepted um, where he lives and he develops this alter ego in a comic he calls him graphite and it's like a superhero version of himself and nobody knows that it's him that makes these comics and that it's his way of kind of coping with reality 
um, until he meets a boy that he likes, you know, and things get complicated. Um, and I thought it was fun. It was also heartbreaking. Um, there was a lot of, you know, homophobia and things like that that make you mad on the inside. But it is also a reality check because these things are happening out there. So ignoring them is also not going to do anything. So it's good that it's being brought up in a book and they're addressing it. Um, and, you know, they're still giving us an empowering message of fight for who you are, you know, love yourself. And also he has two friends that are also very special and it was a lot of fun to read them as well. So if you're looking for a new a queer book, um, I would definitely recommend you to read this one because it was really interesting. But like I said, it has a lot of hate against the uh, LGBTQ community and some bullying. So just make sure that you know that before you go into it. Then I have the Avant-Garde Volume 1 by Carly Ustin and Noah Hayes. And this one is also a graphic novel that I got thanks to Ned Galley. And it's also one that is coming on the 3rd of September 2019. We're following the story of Charlie that is changing schools and she's going to the School of Arts. And she's a little bit nervous and she also always liked sports. So she's really unsure if she should join the basketball team. Um, um, and I really love it. It's it's a super cute story about also LGBTQ uh, characters. Um, and you know, I don't read so much about sports, but when it comes to graphic novels, I don't mind it so much as in novels. And I thought it was just funny, cute. And if you like, um, you know, graphic novels that include LGBTQ characters, I would definitely tell you to pick this one up when it comes out in September. We have just two more books and they both got 4.5 coffee mugs. So the first one is Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. And I had seen this book uh, previously on Chelsea's videos by Chelsea Dolling Reads. And I know that she absolutely loved it. I know that it had some queer characters and I wanted to read it this summer and um, a lot of people have been reading it for the summer -athon, which happened in June so I decided to jump on the wagon and also read it uh, in the month of June and it is absolutely magical this book it's just such a treat to read uh, we are in an island called by the sea where we're following this family of basically witches even though the word is i believe never used in the book but they all have powers they are the women the fernwe women which is a word that in german it kind of translates in english like homesick um and i absolutely love that they gave it that name as well and basically we're following the story of two sisters georgina and mary and how they live in the island and they are preparing for leaving the island next year because they're going to college and it was just such a sweet story and it includes a female female romance and it was very magical it has a very interesting plot twist at the end and it would really steal your heart and the last one also with 4.5 coffee mugs is autobiography by christina lauren so this is my very first christina lauren book and because of pride month i decided to re finally read it and i absolutely love the writing style so i'm really excited to read more by these authors it is the great great story of a half jewish bisexual guy that because of his family moving to this town where most of them, basically 99% of them, uh, belong to this church, to LDS. So he kind of has to go back in the closet. <laughs> um, and you know, all of this progress that he had made in his old school coming out, he just has to take everything back. So it's really hard for him. And uh, he cannot tell anybody because his parents are always telling him they're gonna judge you, they're gonna be mean to you, do not tell anybody. So he's kind of keeping all of this inside until one day he meets a boy that he really likes. And it is probably one of the worst boys he could have fallen for, but you know, that's life. And we follow kind of their story of falling in love and kind of also drifting apart because they know what they're doing is not being accepted and it deals a little bit with religion and the stigmas and I absolutely loved it it felt super realistic it felt cute sometimes sad 
sometimes you just wanted to scream because it was everything was unfair um, and I really loved it the only thing I didn't love so much was our main character's best friend Autumn I felt like she was a little bit undeveloped and done in a weird way where she would say or do things that I don't know they were weird to me like I didn't really believe this character in a way um, she was a little bit naive for me I don't know um, she was definitely not my favorite character but it is a great book um, I thought it had good bisexual representation um, and yeah I really really enjoyed it so I'm super excited to read more by Christina Lauren let me know down below which other books by Christina Lauren that maybe you have read were your favorite ones so that I might check those first. So these were the 11 things that I read in the month of June. Let me know down below your thoughts on the things that I have read and also let me know what is the best thing that you have read in the month of June. Thanks so much for watching you guys. Please give the video a thumbs up for support. Subscribe to this channel. All my other social media is listed down below for you guys and I hope to see you all in the next coffee time. Bye!